Hello everyone, Hollywood Big Boss here, and today I'm going to discuss the November 10th DSF event between the Pontiac Duelist League and only Heritage Duelist Leagues. And as far as all the events I've been to, this has been by far the most awkward event I've ever attended. Now, it started off pretty interestingly. Shaggy 3D and Red Mist were taking on two new duelists, which Red Mist has been longtime acquaintances and friends of. Erickson and Jay, which Red Mist and Shaggy 3D would defeat. However, things started to get weird once myself and the Executioner had arrived from what I'd heard. So let's jump right into it. I had offered Red Mist a spot in the Triple Threat Duel if him and a partner of his choice could defeat me and kill Ardraga. Well, Red Mist and Red Baron of Seeing Red would successfully defeat myself and kill Ardraga. And this only reinforced my reason for breaking up NW 2.0 that we had completely lost track of what we needed to be, because we were defeated really easily. Granted, Red Baron screwed up pretty bad and surrendered to Kale Ardraga, but still, definitely not our, not our finest hour, and we will not be teaming together for a very long time as a result of that loss. However, I would have two singles duels during this event. My duel against Erickson and Jay. The one duelist using a layer of darkness deck took on my Earthbound Immortal deck. And as many people don't know, I actually do have traditional format decks. Boy, were they surprised. You see, the problem with using a layer of darkness deck is if your opponent's using Morphing Jar number 2 and Needle Worm like mine was. So he got decked out rather rapidly. Whereas the other duel, I managed to use my Speed Draw Exodia deck, which is only 40 cards, mind you, but its capability to go through over half the deck in just two or three turns. Well, that can't be rivaled now, can it? Now we get to the tag team duel. JW 2.0, represented by Vixen and Shaggy 3D, would be defeated by Burial 117, the current DSF World Tag Team Champion, and Mantis, who would be filling in for Jedi Ninja due to prior commitments which kept him from the event, hence why there was no World Championship match here either. Several was unable to attend the event. And it had already been discussed. No big deal. Then we come to our main event duel. The Intercontinental Championship match for Duel of Sands Frontieres. And to my surprise, to my shock, Red Mist could have been boring holes through the Executioner's head before that duel even started. Just staring at him. And it's like, bud, get over it. Lord of Gehenna's the one who made the mistake, not the executioner. He's the one who poked the bear. He paid the price for it. But then again, I don't think your plan worked out too well now, did it? Because, to my surprise, and I was totally stunned, shocked, there's not a word for... I'm having a hard time even saying what happened in that duel. But I'm just going to come out and say it. Mantis defeated Red Baron to retain the DSF Intercontinental Championship. The Executioner didn't even take a single life point of damage. But let this marinate in your mind for a second. Mantis, the leader of the Knights of Pontiac, Possibly the worst duelist in the Pontiac Duelist League territory. <laughs> Defeated. 
I'm sorry. I'm totally sorry, people. But it's just kind of hard in my brain to fathom that Red Mist, who is the toughest duelist in Old Inheritance Duelist League, got curb stomped to hell by Mantis. What the hell? <laughs> I'm s I'm sorry, guys. I'm really sorry, but I'm having a hard time keeping my composure over this. Because the fact that it actually happened... Yeah! Red Mist, you dropped the ball big time, my friend. I mean big time. It was like... Gone. Not your finest moment. And in addition, Ray made her return to the Only Heritage Duelist League at this event and would have two major duels. The first one, she would manage to defeat the Executioner with her Monarch deck. By cutting off his extra deck, she was able to totally dominate him. Good job. That's a strategy that not very many people use. It was very effective. However, your duel against Kalar Draga, match duel, first duel she won, second duel you won, and the third duel never happened. We'll have to settle this at a later date as far as that goes. And then Skolkati. Skolkati even showed up, albeit like three hours late, but he still showed up. Gotta give the guy props for that. Lord of Gehenna, though, he wasn't there. But the duel happened as it was supposed to. Skolkati and the Executioner faced off one-on-one. -on -one. And the duel ended in a draw. The battle between the guy who annihilated Red Mist and the Executioner ended in a draw. Anticlimactic. Very anticlimactic. However, here's the weird thing. Even though Skokati didn't win the duel... The Executioner accepted the trade offer after the duel. Lord of Gehenna's Cubic deck? For Skolkati's deck that annihilated Red Mist. The Executioner now has Skolkati's tournament used deck in his possession. Things are going to get very interesting, my friends. Oh, and there was one more contest that did happen. Burial 117, DSF World Tag Team Champion, took on the DSF Intercontinental Champion Mantis. Champion versus champion, no titles were on the line, but Burial 117 absolutely annihilated Mantis in dominating fashion. Which makes the fact that Red Mist got defeated by Mantis earlier that day even more hilarious. So, uh, Red Mist... What's up with you?